on one hand, Wing Chun seems like totally useless. On the other hand, it seems like this magical, uh, like all conquering martial arts. It can win everything. Not just Wing Chun practitioners, but many practitioners. I see that they're like married to their style and mm -hmm. then they're obsessed to make it work. I have to make it work. I have to make it work, which doesn't actually make any sense. Like no one should be married to any style. Instead, they just should focus on actually becoming a good fighter and a good martial artist. I think in some other martial arts as well, it's not only that you are fixed to the to the style, but the style itself is completely fixed. Like if you notice that there's an issue that you should correct and you should maybe develop this technique further, like you can't do it. Then there's the five person who have made Wing Chun work. But when you look at those guys, they have experience and background in kickboxing. When they spar or fight, it actually look kickboxing with some random Wing Chun techniques. Mm. It doesn't even look like Wing Chun. So when we look at one of the most popular martial arts, traditional martial arts in the world right now, it's, it's probably Wing Chun. And Wing Chun, if I think about it, I can see like two kind of separate like very clear views on it. On the on one hand, we have, you know, this very idealized martial art, which is like in, unbeatable. You have the Ip Man movies. It's almost like this superhero strength. And and you have, you know, the Donnie Yang and even Bruce Lee and, and of course, Ip Man himself. And then on the other hand, you have a bunch of these um, masters, Wing Chun masters, who are supposed to be very, very capable and showcase a lot of speed and agility. And at the same time, they get beaten by different type of uh, fighters, boxers, Muay Thai fighters, kickboxers, MMA fighters. And it doesn't matter who against these Wing Chun masters are, they always get beaten. And so I think there's this very interesting discrepancy and, and this like a area between these other extremes where on the one hand, Wing Chun seems like totally useless. On the other hand, it seems like this magical uh, like all conquering martial arts, it can win everything. And I think personally, like the truth is not really on either side. It definitely doesn't look like the, you know, the movie fights, with, like the real Wing Chun, whatever it is in whatever form, is not what Ip Man or Don Yang is doing in the movies. But on the other hand, it's not entirely useless, like it's kind of uh, portrayed in these clips where these masters get like beaten completely. Yeah, I would say that in the movies, it's actually like in the movies like Ip Man, it's actually very accurate, like a demonstration of Wing Chun techniques. But the reality, it's like real fighting doesn't actually look like that. But it's actually, otherwise it's actually very accurate demonstration of Wing Chun. But the problem is that, you know, like you said, in the real fighting, it fails miserably if it mm. actually looks like Wing Chun, but yep. but but like there's on the other one is the fantasy and on the other side is the reality. And I also in the many many years ago when the first Ip Man movie came out, I was hooked. Like I thought this is the mm. best martial art. I saw Donnie Yen beating up like ten karate guys and then beating up the really high level the master karate guy in the end. And I was thinking, yeah, this Wing Chun is like the best martial art ever. But now, after years and years of practice and training and martial arts, I would say that actually the karate would beat Wing Chun almost every time. Because the, as a whole, the karate is just m so much more complete, so much more practical and so much better in like actual fighting scenarios and actual mm. like under pressure test, uh, testing. Yeah, because there's always like, if you say like, well, you know, um, these people failed in using Wing Chun, then people always come with the argument like, well, they just maybe didn't know how to use it or they were not good fighters. But if you look at some of the most popular videos on Wing Chun where they present the art, like what they have, the central line theory stuff, they have the stuff, they stand still, and then they have these pun punches and then they have some like this trapping and the, the arm movements. And like the sticky hands yeah, from the, the sticky, hand, sticky hands basically is a trapping. And from ta uh, that's from Tai Chi. Yep, and that as even like in modern boxing, you have like this, you know, Paris, that kind of resemble. And Muay Thai, they always grab and elbow people. So it's not even that unique, you know, for the Wing Chun. But in the sense that if we look at, you know, we can always think like, well, it should be this or should be that and it has this legendary thing. But I think we need to look at the reality of what people are doing because, you know, the martial art, it's, 
it it consists of the practitioners like it consists of the people who are doing it because otherwise like how can you know it doesn't even training methods or anything it doesn't exist outside of what in way in the of the ways of how we are applying it so i just when i look at these people and how they're doing it it looks like the the wing chun main methods the chain punches and everything is like it's a small part for a very narrow like a scenario in fighting like it can be useful like if you're in a very close range you know or you just have this good opening and you can deliver so many punches like yes you can find always an application for something like that but what happens if you have you know more experienced fighter what happens if there's a lot of movement involved you know like karate you mentioned like karate has is like amazing the distance control whereas if you look at yeah. the 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 wing chun feels like it's doesn't exist almost yes because if i look at like 95 percent of wing chun practitioners online or everywhere mm. they are always like a like a standing post like they are not actually they don't have mm. much of any head movement or movement in general they're just standing and they're relying on their you know the hand batteries and the hand protection and everything else that they think they're like invincible that they're just gonna you know Mm-hmm. Barry one strike and then come with the with the most powerful interceptive counter or something like that. But but exactly like if you look at Wing Chun and the center line theory and everything, of course it has valid points, mm-hmm. but it's like very limited aspect. Like even all the strikes strikes like they have like the front kick, then they have the oblique kick, and so on. It's and maybe the side kick also but it's still very limited like your legs can kick in like probably like 15 different ways and likewise your hands can also move in so many different ways and strike like there's the the straight punches hooks uppercuts so they, they don't use any hooks or i think like it's, i haven't s- I, yeah i haven't seen much but of course you this know like i like i said like 95 percent mm. like it's it's just doesn't work at all like even those grandmasters and every everyone else it doesn't work at all but then there's the five person who have made Wing Chun work but when you look at those guys they have experience and background in kickboxing mm-hmm. and when they spar or fight it actually look kickboxing with some random Wing Chun techniques mm-hmm. it doesn't even look look like Wing Chun yeah, yeah I noticed the same like I what's because I tried to like search you know a bit deeper and You know, you find these clips where there's Wing Chun practitioners, like, or, or people who have it as one part of their arsenal, and they are maybe capable to do some damage in the fights. But every t- every single time it goes to the sparring, like the the real like traditional techniques start to go really out of the window. Like it just everything starts to become more and more looking like traditional boxing, Muay Thai, kickboxing. So that that's uh, another feature of it like you, you just don't even find examples of people actually or like really using it practically and if they use it like usually it ends up very badly so i like someone mentioned you know it the scenario where it probably works the best is if you already have a background like in some you know you know maybe have even years of experience like Anderson Silva, we talk about him in a few times because we talk about we were thinking about who are MMA fighters who actually use traditional martial arts, and Anderson Silva happened to be one of the few guys who said and and like credited Wing Chun that it was like one of his his things because he was moving his hands like here like this way, and you know I, I of course took like wow that's really cool okay we found someone who's using this this stuff but you need to look at the whole entire context like. Anderson Silva already, I think he already was a champion when he started to learn Wing Chun, and, yes. and, and he was like masterful at at uh, different martial arts and th- all these traditional techniques, and he was unorthodox in other ways as well. And then he, you know, puts some Wing Chun to it. So yeah. that's yeah. But with many, not just Wing Chun practitioners, but many practitioners, I see that they're like married to their style, and mm-hmm. then they're obsessed to make it work. Like they just, you know, I have to make it work. I have to make it work, which doesn't actually make any sense. Like no one should be married to any style. Instead, they just sh- should focus on actually becoming a good fighter and a good muscle artist. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, then you can add different techniques from different martial arts and different 
styles from to your style and even Wing Chun like the chain buns it's okay it, it's like a it's I don't think it's much better than like for example boxing straights straight like a left mm-hmm. and right but it has some benefits and it actually has many similarities to the each one style of Chinese Kung Fu this how how you generate power because all these Chinese Kung Fu styles they little bit you know like mixed together mm-hmm. like different style this is focus on different aspects a, a bit more and of course the some of the elbow blocks and the hand parry techniques they work from wings and pretty well mm-hmm. like for example in MMA not just Anderson Silva but Dustin Boyer which is very good fighter he very often uses the elbow block oh like yeah this, like this and he's mostly from boxing background yeah. but he still uses because in MMA some of these elbow blocks and stuff they work very well because you can keep the distance yeah. but but I would say as a general in general Wing Chun it's just in my opinion it just fails as a martial art mm-hmm. but but that's what I was thinking like what is even the original whole purpose of it like is that even the entire art like I'm sure like the form that is nowadays practiced it has failed like that's very clear and I'm just not sure because the if you find if you look at the origin and even history of it it's, it's like nobody knows it's and I think that's maybe the case with many martial arts it's just legends and stuff like that and you have no idea what was it really used for originally because I was thinking like standing for example in the like the, your your uh, total bit in knees bent in this kind of funny looking sissy stance like many people are like, what is that it hurts your knees and whatever but in kung fu like for example horse stands traditionally like we are taught with Jiang Yushan you keep the knees a little bit in and it's for developing rooting like that stance is not for fighting and people are well I got to fight in that but it's like very obvious that this stance is not even meant for it so it could be that the art itself maybe was at some point much wider and this is just a small part of it I have no idea it's a speculation but like as it is now it's 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 so clear that it's so incomplete like how could you think that that's the most unbeatable style when there's no there's not even grappling there's no wrestling there's no distance control like there's no variety of techniques so it's like how can you even argue that it would be like like very efficient that's one one of my things and the other thing is that you talk about like um I'm, I'm not sure if you mentioned but like if you have a martial art you know you talk about the fixation people get fixated on these things right <laughs> but think about boxing like what is it now and then you compare it 100 years ago like it has changed quite a lot like the people like the boxing looks very different and the techniques that these modern fighters have is like they're it looks much better and cleaner than the guys back in like 100 years ago so in boxing it was clear that you you constantly test it in the fights you constantly test it and you constantly evolve it in order to suit better the, the competition Whereas, and it's not just boxing but also <laughs> wrestling like wrestling yeah. from 10 years ago it's different than it's now and now it's more complete and more competitive and more it's just better I, yeah I think it's in many it's yeah it's not just boxing but probably Muay Thai even and the, the maybe even judo or something I don't know but but then in Wing Chun and in I think in some other martial arts as well traditional martial arts there's this idea that it's the, it's not only that you are fixed to the to the style but the style itself is completely fixed like if you notice that there's an issue that you should correct and you should maybe develop this technique further like you can't do it like it's like yeah. you're, you're, you know you, you know like you're not allowed to to develop this because if Wing Chun would be allowed to then you know freely to to be developed further like I think any martial art should should be like this the techniques would probably evolve a lot and there will be a lot of new techniques and in the end it might not even resemble anything like what it is now but that's just an idea of like what, what is really even martial arts like it's not even supposed to be this this thing where you've just fixed and this is it and like, that is to n- not say that all these traditional martial arts and kung fu styles do not have anything to offer we actually think like,